they see me rolling. Terry Fox. <laughs> you know, if you ever need to take inventory of anybody uh, between the ages of 35 and 41 in a store, all you have to do is just yell, Regulators! Mo Tup! You'll see, you'll hear like eight people from the corners of the store. Mo Tup! That's how you inventory people from 35 and 41 in, 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 in a place. Yes, yeah, regular. You've done that before, haven't you? Well, I I may have responded. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, that increases the level of having a rookie draft pool. Mm-hmm. You know, with teams that are cap strapped, they have to go to the rookie draft pool. Right. Uh, and it ranges anywhere between, you know, eight, nine, and 14, 15 million dollars. Right. It just kind of depends on where that those first two rounds, those is, picks are. Is that going to matter? Let me ask you this. Is that going to matter? Because most of the time, teams would use that increased revenue and that increased salary cap just for the rookie pool. Oh, that's an interesting point. So are you saying that a team, we'll just use Dallas as an example, yes. right? Dallas might jettison their first round pick for a player because they know they can't afford the first round pick next year, right? They look at a player like, uh, what I mean, what would be a good example? You look at a player who's making two, $3 million a season, maybe a guy on a rookie deal, got two years left. Yeah, I could absolutely see a team like Dallas saying, we're not going to have the money for these first and second round picks. But this guy's on a two-year deal at, at $2 million each. Yeah, we'll take that. I, I don't know Bring if a first-round pick goes for that. But we may see an increase in the non-exclusive. Is it the non-exclusive? I always forget it's the, up. Yeah. So it's the – yeah, it's – so the non-exclusive are the um, – so there's exclusive free agents, right? Restricted free agents. No, no, no. I'm talking about exclusive – Oh the, oh, the franchise The tag. franchise tag. So you have an exclusive oh, tag. There's yeah, a transition yeah. tag where you guys know they put a transition tag on somebody. They can go shop for any other teams. They can bring one ta- one deal back to the table. Right. And if the team chooses to sign it, it's theirs. If they don't, then the right. other team gets it. The other two is exclusive and non-exclusive. I always confuse them. Paul always gets them right. The uh, one, is, one involves two first-round picks. Yeah, if you sign – right, exactly. If, a, if they're still a free agent, right, yes. and they can go get a deal, but if you sign that player – it costs you two first round picks yes. to sign that player. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And you're saying that that could be a possibility. If, if you're, if you're running down the gamut and you say, listen, okay, we're willing for this player mm. that we know is proven. That's interesting. Jamal Adams. If they run, if, if it gets to the point where the jets do not trade him, and it gets down to the point where they put an exclu- is it exclusive or not exclusive. That's the exclusive. See, if they put the exclusive franchise tag, it costs two first-round picks. And a team like Dallas says, listen, we're not going to use our first two first-round picks anyway. Let's get this guy in. But the deal that you would have to sign him would outweigh the two first-round picks. Well, true, right? But you start working with cap increase at that point, right? So think about it, right? Let's say you do want to sign Jamal Adams to $14 million a season, right? Let's just just throw that number out there. The number's 14 mil. Three years, 42. Go ahead. Uh, double that. <laughs> six years, 90 is probably where he really wants to be, right? Six years, 90, six That's years, quarterback money. Money, he man. wants quarterback money. That's just a fact, right? But you're going to say, okay, well, we're going to sign you to this deal, but you're going to jettison the first round pick. That's your, that's your cap increase, right? You look at it, it's saying, well, we're jettisoning the first round pick. We Over don't have to pay, years. we don't have to pay that player for the next four seasons twice. So we're getting money in this deal. So the trade-off is, even though they may say, hey, we're paying him this, this amount of money for six years, right? we're giving up two first-round picks that are going to cost X amount of dollars. Oh, in total. Oh, right. uh, it's, I mean, it is a possibility. I always thought of it as the rookie pool was taken care of by the increase in salary cap. Right. So guys could play around with the rookie, the draft picks, and all this other stuff. Well, I, I think for Buffalo specifically, this isn't a worry because you've got cap space. They've been conservative. But what I'm saying is don't be surprised if this team that's always been kind of reliant on, you know, young players and then, you know, veterans or journeymen, don't be surprised. Some of those veterans who are on those higher contracts start not making the team because you're going to need that money next year because you're, you're not getting it. And you need that money for Dawkins, Milano, whoever else you want to resign, or just in the free agent market. Like, let's say Mario Addison blows out his Achilles. Are you going to want Mario? Are you going to want a, a blown Achilles, Mario Addison next season? At thirty-five? And absolutely not. Right, you're back in the pool again. You're back in. So you're going to need that cash. So mm. I'm just saying this doesn't directly impact Buffalo right now, but it could impact Buffalo right now, and I. Very, very leery that with that cap not going up, veteran players are going to start getting the axe. That's 
It's a fascinating conversation, isn't it? It's it's a scary conversation because you always expect, because for the last five or six years, that's what the cap has done. It's gone up. It's right. kept going up. It's kept yeah. going up. And then you see the increase in salaries for some of these players, mm-hmm. some of these players. And you see guys trading for seven or eight picks in a draft because mm-hmm. they have the capital to do so, and they rolled over this much. and they right. just, It's it's fascinating if it does not go up. You're like, listen, we're staying here. We're at mm-hmm. 230. This is where we are. I yep. don't know what it is right now, but 220, 230, something like that. This is where we are. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Well, if you have Moneyball guys like Hickey and Locke, mm-hmm. you can do that. Right. Well, and, you know, to put it all out on the table, right, we hear Bean talked about as a cap wizard. I've seen that in the comment section a bunch, right? Bean's a cap wizard. The truth of the matter is he's just pragmatic, right? Risk versus reward, and he's really conservative. He stacks the deck with as many players as he can get. With that said, this next season um, is going to be a fascinating one from a cap perspective because I just don't see the cap going up, man. And Buffalo is prepared for it. I think that's a nice thing. They're, I think they're they're ready for it. I mean, maybe that answers the question we've been asking for almost a year and a half now with we don't know how Bean resigns guys because he knew the CBA was coming. It was around the corner. Oh, that's a good point. Like, let me see how this plays out. That's a good point. What do you guys think? I'm scared. We're always scared. This is what he does. <laughs> You're always scared.